10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Allumage P120, décollage. est calme, la propulsion est nominale. Acquisition de la télémesure par la station de Saint-Jean du Maroni. Vega C and Colpsat 7 have started their journey. Vega C pushing itself against the gravity of our planet into the equatorial skies over the Guiana Space Center. We are heading out north over the Atlantic. Look at that beautiful clear skies here with some fluffy clouds. He's telling us that everything is going according to plan. And didn't you see how quickly the rocket lifted off into the sky? Yes, yes, uh, very quickly. That's, uh, that's due to the, the type of, uh, of the propulsion used uh, by the launcher. So the, the first three stages burn solid propellant, and that gives uh, a lot of power. And the launcher needs that power to tear itself from, uh, away from us. Indeed, and that's the job of the first three stages, to tear us away from gravity Le which is pulling us back down everything's going well he's telling us and right now we are burning that's the engine that you can see is actually the p20 engine it's the engine on the first stage it's very powerful isn't it yes a p120 so very powerful first stage uh thrust at lift off of 4300 kilonewton it's delivering uh, the punch of approximately 440 tons of force, so that's a lot of energy packed into a single solid uh, rocket motor. Fantastic images there of the P120 burning. The uh, next event will be the switching off of that engine. That's coming up in a few seconds time. And we can see it there. Separation du P120. And we have confirmation from the range operations manager à that the P120 has been separated and we've switched on the engine of the Z40. Everything is going well, so we don't need that anymore. So we can jettison it. And we are shedding weight. We are now burning the Z40, the second stage, Vincent. Yes, the second stage um, called Zephyro 40, Z for uh, Zephyro, Z40, um, Italian, yes, for, uh, for a type of uh, wind. Mm -hmm. You can see on the left hand side are the events that will be coming up during the launch, and the blue line, if you like, the at the bottom is uh, us flying into space. And he's telling us that everything is going normally, and on the bottom, right hand side of your screen is the altitude our distance uh, from the pad and our speed in kilometers per second good shot of the fair there protecting our satellite yes the fairing on top of the of the launcher so it has a different job so it's protecting uh, the spacecraft against the acoustic vibration at the lift off it's also protecting against against friction when the launcher flies through the dense part of the atmosphere and that uh, aerodynamic friction generates a uh, significant environment and for instance uh, vibrations of course and heat for the for the spacecraft and once we exceed the atmosphere the aerodynamic loads reduce so we can jettison the fairing and the principle is to uh, avoid dragging mass that is uh, no longer useful for the launch mission indeed that's the name of the game to jettison every section of the rocket as we fly as we no longer need it coming up now on our next big moment switching off of the z40 separating the z40 
And he's confirmed we've switched the engine on on the Z9. Everything's going normally. Separation coiffe. And we have separated the fairing. You can see it there on the animation falling away in two halves. We don't need it anymore because we are, we've crossed the border with space. So we uh, are outside the dense part of the atmosphere and we don't really need it, uh, have, have uh, to worry about friction. We can see our satellite for the first time, Vassal. Yes, the satellite for the first time on top of the, of the launcher, so securely on top. Uh, on the adapter with a specific uh, metallic belt called the clamp down, yes. And uh, quickly, just to uh, explain here on the top right hand side of your screen, you yes. can see the green line is the tra trajectory. Yes, the trajectory. So, in uh, green, this is, and in uh, the yellow curve, give us a real time trajectory. So, we can see that uh, we are perfectly on track in line with the prediction. And the, the cross is uh, the real time position of the. Of the We've started something that we call orbit optimized guidance attitude what's that yes um, the onboard computer um, continually recalculates its uh, position this is to make sure that uh, it's on the right course and uh, if it deviates uh, it corrects its position and comes back to, the, to the planned uh, trajectory so this is clever uh, uh, sequence of course with uh, a very good onboard computer we have uh, on, uh, on the launcher Looking here at these CGI images, computer generated images or 3D as they are sometimes known. It's an animation. Uh, it's an animation based on what's expected to unfold in space at this very moment. Um, and uh, he uh, has just announced here the pushing of the Z, the, uh, Z9, poussé de l'eau du Z9 <laughs> in French. Um, so yeah. And these uh, computer-generated images are actually a simulation. It's not the a a actual uh, telemetry, is it? Y yes, a, a simulation. So this is 3D animation that shows uh, the predicted behavior of the launcher, not the, the, the real uh, behavior coming from the telemetry. So it includes, of course, the trajectory in terms of uh, velocity, uh, altitude, ground track, uh, the different stages separation, and uh, but also all the launcher maneuvers. Separation du Z9. And we have separation there yes. of the Z9. That's confirmed. Allumage du premier boost Avum. And we have the first switching on of the Avum Plus upper stage engine confirmed. That's going to burn for about nine and a half minutes. And he's also confirmed that we've picked up the signal at the tracking station in Bermuda, which is a very beautiful island in the Caribbean. There you go. You can see where it is there. Uh, so Vega C checking in there and saying hello to the teams. Anyong Haseo, Bermuda. So we are traveling. Have a look there on the right hand side of your screen underneath the trajectory, our altitude 247 kilometers high and climbing our distance from the pad. And on the right hand side, our speed, which is seven and a half kilometers per second. Yes, <laughs> already seven uh, on five kilometers per second. So. Uh, very high speed, so it's uh, the equivalent to 20, uh, 27,000 kilometers per hour. So it's uh, 30 times faster than a commercial aircraft. So uh, very impressive uh, speed. Is. Yeah, very, very fast. Le pilotage est calme, la propulsion est nominale. All's going well. The piloting and propulsion are nominal. So the main propulsion phase is now over. We've got away from Earth. We have started the next phase of our journey. The Avon Plus upper stage has taken the wheel and it has a very, a very important job because uh, not only does it have to take its passenger to its drop off point in space, but it then has to deliver it. Yes, so we need to take Comsat 7 to its orbit, so 576 kilometers above Earth. And to do that, we fire the Avum Plus engine twice. Um, this first time takes us to an intermediate orbit. And then later, the second time will take us to what we call the injection orbit. 
that the orbit where we will inject the satellite into space. And after that, CommSat 7 uh, will be able to start its new life and uh, its important mission and tasks. Indeed, it will. And it needs to be on what we call a sun sun synchronous orbit that is a special type of orbit north to south nearly over the poles yes so it means uh, the spacecraft uh, fly over the same zone of the earth the same local time every day um, so every time you pass over that zone uh, you're seeing it in the same light conditions it means we can see the same zone in the same light uh, day after day uh, so we can see how it change, uh, changes uh, over time. This is very useful for uh, such missions, such as uh, observing Earth and, uh, and monitoring the, the weather. Indeed, because these are the kinds of missions that need that constant and that continuity over time. So as we said, we are flying north. We've um, gone into being tracked at the moment over the Caribbean, uh, we'll be heading up over to the east coast of Africa, back over the North Pole and back down over Southeast Asia. And we are, of course, tracking our rockets using telemetry. We've got ground stations along the flight path. I mean, basically, the avian upper stage is talking to us, isn't it? Isn't it? It's, it's communicating. Indeed. Uh, the rocket sends a signal to the ground station as it uh, flies over. Um, they, gave, they have a, a big dish uh, to, to capture that signal, so a big antenna. That's how we know what's happening uh, on board the rocket, and it allows us to track the, the flight in, uh, in real time. Indeed, we can see there, that's the Gatineau tracking station. That's in Canada. And the tracking stations actually send... And that's uh, confirmed there. They send the data here to a hillside just outside the spaceport, the Guiana Space Center. And inside these teams are the Quick Look Telemetry teams. Very important job. Yeah, they are receiving those uh, real-time data from the launcher uh, and, uh, and analyzing them. So that includes the status of the engine, the trajectory, the flight control. So they compare the live data from the rocket to what has been predicted. It's, uh, this allows them to continuously analyze the launcher behavior and confirm that it is as uh, expected. Um, it's a bit like uh, the doctor <laughs> checking the health to verify that everything is fine on board. So the team uh, in charge is uh, located in Galio on La Montagne des Pères, uh, 20 kilometers from, uh, from the launch pad. La Montagne des Pères, the mountain of the fathers. We saw it back there. It's very pretty, actually. It's very beautiful. So those teams in the Quick Look Telemetry uh, building, they are actually on an internal comms loop, and they're passing the information to the range operations manager here in Mission Control. We can see him there. And he then announces confirmation of all those um, major events to everybody here at the spaceport, because as you can imagine it's a big place. So everyone across the range is listening in to his amount announcements. Um, Vincent, we often talk, don't we, when we're talking about tracking stations and we talk about a rocket going in and out of visibility mm -hmm. of a tracking station. We talk about visibility, but actually the, the stations, they're not actually seeing the rocket, are they? Because obviously it's deep, deep in space. We can't see it with our own eyes, but they are sensing it, right? Yes, Katie. Yeah. When we when we talk about the visibility of a rocket, we are talking about how the ground stations detect and receive the signals sent by the launcher. These signals uh, contain information related to the position, the velocity, the, the onboard environment, and so on. Uh, this allows us to track the accuracy of its trajectory and monitor that it's uh, behaving at, as, uh, as planned. And a key factor, of course, in rocket visibility is an uninterrupted line of sight. Yes, so the, the antennas at the tracking station need a line of sight uh, to the rocket, which is uh, unobstructed. So that's because the Earth is curved. Uh, so the rocket becomes visible only when it comes above the horizon of the, of the station. We call this the visibility cone. Uh, so <laughs> let's imagine an ice cream cone. Uh, the narrow point is on the ground and the widest part is in space. So 
when the rocket flies uh, into the widest part of the, of the cone, the station can detect uh, it. It's actually a, a little bit wider, isn't it, than an ice cream cone? It's a great analogy. We're getting, the next event will be the switching off of the upper stage engine, the Avon Plus engine. That's due in a, in a couple of minutes time. But the, the, the engine can switch on and off a number of different times during the flight. How does it know when to do it, when to switch on and off? Well, the, the Avon upper stage uh, has, a, has a brain, it's a, uh, it's uh, the onboard computer, so it contains uh, the avionics, uh, the guidance system, and uh, an inertia measurement unit, which tells uh, the computer its position, its speed, and, uh, and orientation. So, of course, we plan the mission well in advance on the basis of uh, pred uh, predictions and uh, mission analysis. Uh, uh, we program all that information into the flight software, there are sensors on the upper stage. Uh, they feed real-time information to the computer about how far it has traveled and uh, its position in space. And um, when the, the computer detects uh, that the upper stage is on the right orbit, it sends uh, the command to switch the engine on or uh, off. Is uh, the range operations manager telling us everything is going normally? So the, um, that information that you uh, talked about there, the inertial uh, measurement unit, is picking up and sensing uh, that, of course, then is, is all sent down. All the signal that we were talking about, the telemetry signal, that goes down to the tracking stations. It then is relayed back here to the Guiana Space Center, to the Quick Look telemetry team, who we saw earlier. And of course, that then allows us to have all this information on the right hand side of your screen, which is the real time telemetry data. So we can see we're 354 kilometers above Earth and our speed 7.78 kilometers per second. Coming up now to the switching off of the Avon Plus upper stage. There we go. That's how it looks.